Hello everyone, I'm out here on the Cumberland Plateau in central Tennessee and I'm going to be doing some caving for the Tennessee cave salamander. So I'm about to go in right here and we will see what we can turn up. First salamander of the evening is this nice big adult cave salamander here. Now these are the more common cave salamanders in these caves. They are not, they're different from the Tennessee cave salamander. These are from the genus Eurycia. Typically you see them on the cave walls, but this individual here is just walking across the floor of the cave. So we should be seeing plenty more of these where we can get a closer look at them, but I'm just gonna let this big girl go and keep on caving. Next salamander of the night is this absolutely massive Tennessee cave salamander. This is what we come in here to see. This is just about as big as these guys get. Now, where these are from the genus Gyronophilus, they are a lot like the spring salamanders. But the difference is these are actually neotenic, so they keep their gills into adulthood. Um, neotenic basically means, you know, staying in your juvenile stage. So these stay... Um, in their larval or tadpole form into adulthood. Of course, in these caves, there's much more opportunity to staying in the aquatic habitat. So, yeah, really beautiful salamanders. I really couldn't have asked for a larger individual here in this cave. It's an absolutely massive, really gorgeous Tennessee cave salamander. Now, obviously, you don't want to touch these guys, but right here is my hand for a size reference, just an absolutely huge cave salamander. Um, these are endemic to the Cumberland Plateau here of central Tennessee and some areas of the eastern highland rim. It's an absolutely amazing species. Occasionally these guys will actually morph and lose their gills and you know that's not really a natural thing but some individuals do. They always have the potential to and you will see big morphed adults. And I'm sitting on the cave walls in subterranean areas such as these, and they're very similar to the spring salamanders. But yeah, I couldn't have asked for a better second salamander of the evening. Hopefully we will see some more of these, but it's going to be hard to top a big adult like this. Yeah, I'm gonna photograph this guy here and keep on caving. Here's another shot of this Absolutely gorgeous Tennessee cave salamander. I just want to keep photographing this guy here. Really hate to let him go. Actually, it might be a big girl judging by the girth. Um, this species gets pretty long and stocky, so it's hard to tell. There are very few caves where you can actually get access to where this species lives. This is one of them. And they have a very small range here along the plateau. It's an absolutely amazing amphibian. Look at those eyes. Now, typically their gills are a bit bigger than this. This one actually has what appears to be receding gills. Shouldn't be morphing at this age, but you never know with these. So we're just going to leave it to what it's doing here and keep on caving. And the next salamander of the evening is another Tennessee cave salamander. This one is slightly smaller, not quite as chunky. This could be a male here. Um, again, just out on the crawl, there are these little shallow stretches of this cave stream here. These are absolutely amazing animals. So far, it has been a really productive evening here. This one is climbing up into the shallows here looking for a place to hide. These salamanders, if you can already tell, have very poor eyesight. I guess they can see just a little bit, but their eyes are um, practically just not really functional. So, yeah, just gorgeous creatures. So cool to see two adults in here in this one short stretch. See it's moving a short distance over this rock here and just sliding right back into the stream. Absolutely beautiful. I guess this is just how they move around in here. They move through these streams, go through little yeah, um, ripples like this. 
then hang out in the shallow pools. Occasionally you can actually flip rocks in these cave streams and find these guys. But typically you just see them out on the crawl like this. So really cool salamander. We're gonna see how many more we can find and keep on caving. And right here we have the third adult Tennessee cave salamander. Absolutely incredible. I have never seen this many adults here in this cave. And this one is reasonably sized as well. Not quite as big as the first one, but pretty chunky. Just hanging out here um, on the crawl through these little shallow, slow-moving stretches of the stream. We are having a great evening in here. Here's a perfect shot of this one. But yeah, we're just going to leave it to what it's doing here. And Next find of the night is this nice little cave salamander here. This is the um, normal cave salamander, Eurycia lucifica. This is actually right outside of the mouth of the cave we were in. We just made it out. Um, we've seen a few more big Tennessee cave salamanders, but they were in deep pools, and we just couldn't really get clear shots of them without disturbing them. So there was a little bit we didn't film, but all in all, a really good trip. I look forward to seeing more of them in the future. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to end this part of the video here with this little cave salamander and drive back to East Tennessee and call it a night. What is up guys? I just made it back home here to Northeast Tennessee after an absolutely incredible run down to the Cumberland Plateau to see some Tennessee cave salamanders. That was a really, um, just an amazing experience. Um, you know, I had been down there and found that species once before, but I had never seen so many large adults. There was actually a few individuals in really deep water and under rocks and just really difficult places to get to that I wasn't able to film. But yeah, that trip was totally worth it. Just a really good time. But I'm back here now to do some herping around the house to finish this video out. So I'm going to start hiking here soon and see what I can find. And I will see you guys shortly. So I just made it up here into some good upland habitat where I set up a few pieces of tin for snakes back in the spring. And this is only the second time I have checked it. So hopefully it's been long enough to um, find some snakes under it. So. I'm going to flip here, let's see, nothing here, let's try this old piece here, nobody, Oh, he's familiar. Now this is a species that I used to find here years ago. And after about three years of not seeing them, um, I decided to set up some new tin. The old tin that I had out here basically just rusted and started breaking apart. So it had seen its better days. Now I just set up all of these new pieces here back in April. So it's not been here long. Typically you want to let tin sit to, um, I guess season, if you would prefer that term. Now, sadly, this milk is in shed, or it would be an absolutely gorgeous big adult, but still a really cool find. You can tell it would be a gorgeous individual if it was out of shed. As you can see here, the eyes are in the blue. The lighting on this flash here is kind of giving it a whiter look. I'm trying to get it up here. But yeah, this is one of the species I set this tent up here for, so it's good to see that there are still milks in the area. This appears to be a big female here, but yeah. Nice eastern milk snake. 
never can go wrong with a milk or a lampropeltis of any kind. And now it is time for the most important part of every find. And that is the release. Get back under there, little buddy. All right, let's see what else we can find. One more piece. Oh, eastern worm snake. Just hanging out here. If I can get it to relax. Everybody get out of the leaf. There we go. This is a really light tan individual. Now these are really common throughout the range, especially in dry, sandy, upland areas like this. You see a ton of them. But again, it's cool to see that this tan is producing. This isn't bad to have just been set up in April. Now, eastern worm snakes, of course, as many of you know, they are a fossorial species. As you can tell by their little heads and tiny eyes, they are built for burrowing. They live much of their life underground. Um, again, nothing too spectacular, but... And it's fast. Nothing too spectacular, but really cool find nonetheless. I'm going to take some quick pictures and put it back under its tin. On my way down the mountain here, I just found this nice little northern ringneck snake. It was just crossing the trail here. But yeah, I'm going to let it go. And unless I see something else on the way out, this should be the end of the video here. Well, I thought... I ended my video with the end of my hike, but on the way home, I just cruised this massive female northern water snake. Now, this one is actually really chill for a Nerodia. Really beautiful. You see the red bands here. She is not behaving like a typical northern water snake would. Um, generally, all of the Nerodia are very... Um, body when you get a hold of them but this girl is the exact opposite but normally I wouldn't stop for just any old Nerodia in the road but this is a absolutely gorgeous large um, appears to be gravid female here. so the last clip ended early because my flash was going off due to my battery being low but here's another shot of this massive female northern water snake it's a really pretty one here with these red bands. Normally I wouldn't get too excited about a Nerodia, but one this size with the beautiful red coloration, you gotta stop for it, especially a gravid female. But I'm going to make sure she gets off the road here so she can lay her eggs and hopefully not get ran over by any cars in the near future. Gorgeous snake.